Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is uh, another version of the LM338 kit, very similar to ours, um, but this was not manufactured by us. Um, it will be a little bit less expensive because the quality isn't as good as our own version, but it's essentially the same kit. So, um, feel free to follow along. We're going to build it from scratch and then we are going to test it. Let's talk about the parts. you got two electrolytic capacitors, the very big ones. Uh, 2200 microfarad, one's 4700 microfarad. Um, you've got uh, fastening materials, a, a nut and a, uh, a, nut and a uh, washer for the potentiometer in case you want to mount it. Uh, you may or may not use these, otherwise you'd use the, uh, uh, the knob and we'll, we'll show you how that fits on later. Uh, the LM338 right here three zero point one microfarad ceramic capacitors um, four felt washers four small nuts two big nuts two big uh, two thick screws uh... four long screws two diodes two terminal blocks uh... a twelve volt regulator bridge rectifier again the variable resistor that tunes the output large heat sink uh... and the fan the fan is used uh, as an alternate method of heat sinking just to cool keep the uh, LM338 cool under uh, harsh loads and the custom PCB. Now when you receive your kit look for these materials. Uh, I've checked every single kit personally. Uh, now another thing you might, if you say I can't find some of the parts look in the fan because more often than not you'll find that um, the, wa the washer and the bolt or in the nut and the uh, the, cap the little capacitors get stuck in there. So look for those as soon as you receive it. Anyway, first of all, what we'll do is we'll put our uh, resistor. Sorry, I must actually miss that uh, 200 ohm resistor. Uh, our resistor, our diodes, and our capacitors. We're going to put those in the board, and, and we're going to do the step by step. So let's do let's do those components. The capacitors and the resistor are very easy. The resistor goes in the slot right here, labeled 200 ohms. The first ceramic capacitor, um, it's ceramic. It's non-polarized, it doesn't matter which way it goes in. It goes in the first slot right here, labeled 0.1 UF. The second capacitor, it goes in the slot here, labeled 0.1 UF, microfarad. And the last capacitor goes uh, right in here, uh, this little slot labeled 0.1 UF. The diodes, on the other hand, you might not be able to see them very well from here, but the diodes, there's a white side of the diode, a side with a diode with a little stripe of white paint around it, and the uh, second, the other half of the diode is uh, black. On the uh, footprints, they're labeled 4007. And there is a white stripe on one side, so make sure to match the white stripe of the diode with the white stripe on the footprint. In this case, we're going to have the, the white stripe facing the right-hand side of this footprint and the black side facing the left. In this case right here, we want to have the white side facing the bottom and the black side facing the top. So, solder those into place, and uh, next we will do the uh, LM338 and heat sink. Okay, so this is kind of a two-part step. The heat sink, place it on like this. Just leave it flopping around. The LM338 only fits in one way. Line up the holes. There's two mounting holes at the top and the bottom. Once you've got the uh, leads through, you can take your two large screws, your two thick screws, and uh, put them through the other side and use your two thick uh, nuts uh, to secure them. Now, don't tighten the nuts yet. I'm going to show you something. As you can see, I haven't soldered the leads yet. I've put the, the nuts on. So I have some, I can move the, my, my, my heat sink around a little bit. You want to make sure it's moved a bit to the right so it's not interfering with any of the uh, passive component leads. So make sure that it's, it's, it's secured properly and try not to short anything. Then what you want to do is you want to tighten these up using some pliers. Once everything's hunky-dory, then you use a nice healthy amount of solder here to secure and uh, connect the LM338 to the board. So do that, and then uh, next we will put our, forgot to mention, before we put our fan on, take your 12 volt regulator, 7812, and push it down into the board uh, with the back facing this side of the board. Uh, solder that into place. Now what you want to do before you put your fan on, uh, you want to take the, the, uh, 
the the metal flags here and push them out. Not to the point where they're going to interfere with the mounting holes. There's four mounting holes that we're going to mount the fan on. You don't want to bend them out too far, but you want to bend them out to the point where they're not going to ha interfere with the fan blades. That's very important. You might have to do it, you know, fiddle with it a few times. It does, revol you know, it does require a little bit of calibration. Now you want, when you put the, the fan on, you want to place it with the wires facing this way. So, then what you do is you, put, you take your four long screws, put them through each hole, put them through uh, each hole in the board, then go underneath, place the felt washers on, the insulated washers on, and then the nuts. Now, don't tighten them. We're going to get to that in a minute. I've calibrated the top so that the fan is sitting properly and that the fan blades are moving freely. That's when you can tighten. You don't need to use uh, pliers. You can just hand tighten. Now, here's the thing. You want to make sure that the uh, the heatsink uh, blades are are out far enough that they're seating the fan and not interfering with the fan blades. If you tighten it and those fan blades are are not moving perfectly and you hear scraping or they're not moving at all, you power up the fan. You're likely going to damage your fan blades. Be very careful. Be very certain that you've mounted this properly. It takes some fiddling with, but once it's done, it looks great. Uh, next step, we want to put on the rectifier which really only fits in one way there's three pins that are close together and then there's uh, one pin that's further away uh, there's also a, a little slant in the upper left hand corner there so it, it actually faces this way so put that down into the board and use a healthy amount of solder next we'll do the capacitors and the potentiometer I forgot an important step uh, we are, didn't. We haven't soldered in our wires yet, so we're going to get to that. But first, we're going to do our potentiometer. Potentiometer really only fits in one way, right here. Solder that into place. I've added the uh, mounting materials to my potentiometer. As you can see, I've screwed it all on. Uh, because if I want to save it till for, for a mounting later, I can do that and just solder wires between the two. Um, this, when you when you actually solder on your potentiometer, turn it all the way left and put the knob with the, the, the arrow facing about 7 o'clock from the bottom. 7 or 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, because you only get about 300 degrees of rotation. And so that left will be lo your voltage low, right will be voltage high. So solder that into place. Next we'll do the wire. It might be hard to see but there are two slots right behind the regulator that are labeled plus and minus. Plus is your plus 12 volt line which you want to connect to your red wire, which I've cut for size, and your the negative is your black wire. So put your black wire in the negative in the negative slot, and your positive wire in the positive slot. That'll feed 12 12 volts to the uh, to the fan. Solder that in place. We'll do the capacitors. There are two electrolytic slots, one labeled 2200 microfarads and one 4700 microfarads. 4700 microfarad, of course, is the bigger capacitor physically. There is a plus sign on the top of uh, both um, footprints. That means that your positive lead should be placed there. Your positive lead is the longer lead. So make sure that for the 2200 microfarad, the long lead is placed in the top and your short lead is placed in the bottom. And same for the uh, 4700 microfarad. Don't reverse those or you will have to stand clear when you power it on and you'll get a big boom. Long lead is positive. Plus sign. You may not be able to see it from here, but uh, yeah, you can't see it from here. So anyway, solder those into place and flush with the board and then we'll do our last step, which is our terminal block. You may be able to see the two swirly symbols. Those that That's an indicator that AC can be fed there. And uh, actually DC can too. Uh, in fact, DC can be placed, uh, positive DC can be placed on the left or right, and ground can be placed on the left or the right because of the regulator. I'll get to that more in a second uh, when we test it, because I'll be using DC to test it. But what we want to make sure to do is there's two sides of the regulator. There's a screw terminal side and there's a, a plastic side. Make sure that the screw terminal side is facing outwards, or else you're not going to be able to wire in your, uh, your input power lines. So same goes the output with the other one. You want to make sure that the screw terminals are facing outwards, not inwards. So solder those in place, healthy amount of solder, and then we'll test it. One last check before we power it up for the first time. Make sure that your fan is not hitting anything. 
you could destroy your fan if uh, if it's if it's grinding against something. So it's moving nicely and nice and freely, and my it's secure. So uh, from the input side of things, I've got DM feeding DC. Uh, I could put my positive DC on the right and my ground on the left if I wanted. I'm not going to get into the theory behind it, but because of the uh, AC, the the um, the rectifier here. Uh, the bridge rectifier doesn't matter which uh, which pin I put my positive and neg negative power line on. Uh, on the output side, the positive uh, output is on this side, red, and the negative is on this side. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up, and I'm going to show you uh, what's good, what happens. I've got about 22 volts on the input. Nice fan. The fan's working nicely. I can feel cool air coming from both sides. Uh, I've got my potentiometer turned all the way left. Minimum is one, roughly 1.25 volts. Now the fan is regulated to 12 volts. So you have to have more than 12 volts for the fan to operate. Uh, under certain conditions, a kit like this can uh, source up to 5 amps, but it really, it, that's it very dependent on some factors, such as the uh, the difference between the input and output voltage, and can your input source supply that much current. Uh, as for You can put AC or DC on the input, but I wouldn't surpass uh, 30 volts AC or 30 volts DC. Uh, the spec sheet says you can put more on there, but I wouldn't, just from... Uh, just because, especially with AC, because AC, you know, if it's if something is 30 volts AC, that's RMS. You might actually be seeing something like 36 volts AC. So that's just an example. So I would just, I like to use DC with this kit, but you can you just as easily use DC, and that's what the bridge rectifier is for. Anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask. Uh, in about a few weeks, I'll have these uh, up for sale fully built and uh, assembled, so you can buy them fully built if you'd like. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, visit engineeringshot.com and electroniclessons.com.